So as Ben mentioned, my name is Danielle Dean. I'm a data scientist at Microsoft, and I'm excited to be here today to tell you a story about me. Um, and apparently, you all know me because Ben just told you about how I'm going to review a committee. Um, a friend, I'm telling you also about a story of a friend of mine who works on the floor above me and the, our common dilemma that led to the birth of automated machine learning on Azure. So I always loved learning from data to understand how the world works. When I graduated with my PhD in quantitative psychology, I was hired as a data scientist. I was excited to tackle huge volumes of data to try to understand patterns and trends. Now, it was really cool to solve real problems. I built lots of models, did lots of different pre-processing pipelines, tried to understand, do I need to remove outliers? What type of model do I need? Do I need to reprocess this data? There's a lot of decisions that go into building an ML system. And ultimately, these decisions that you take, they end up impacting the accuracy of the model that you end up using. The combination of data pre-processing, the model family, the hyperparameter tuning. Now, people always ask for the secret to success, and I'm a true hardcore data scientist, right? So I know all the answers. I know, for example, there's these cheat sheets from Scikit-Learn that you can look up, and there's rules of thumb. If you have more than 50 samples, this is what you do. Oh, that's not enough data. Um, I would have all the answers to all of these questions. But I'm going to tell you a little secret today, because this is not a big room, and there's not many of you, and you're not going to tell anyone, right? <laughs> the real answer to all of those questions, what do you do, how do you decide, this is the real answer. You just try. Trial and error. Now, don't get me wrong. The rules of thumb are useful. The guides are useful. But at the end of the day, we just have to try stuff. That comes down to trial and error. And here comes the data scientist dilemma. How much of this do you do? Do you keep going? Do you keep doing? Do you keep trying different things? Do you keep trying different model families? Do you keep tuning your hyperparameters? Do you keep reprocessing that data? Over and over and over again, this trial and error, how much do you do? And this is a dilemma. When do you actually stop? Because let's admit it, it's kind of boring. So I'm going to tell you the story now of a friend of mine, Niccolo Fuzzi, who's working on a really cool problem called CRISPR ML. Uh, CRISPR is a tool that helps in gene editing. And the goal of gene editing is to empower biomedical researchers to make precise, targeted changes to the genome in order to do things like treat diseases. And he works on the floor above me. And he's doing lots of cool stuff, as you can see from these news articles, articles from Nature and, and The Economist, for example. Now, of course, if you believe Wired, this could also mean the end of life as we know it. Or, hopefully, it can also just mean some really good tweets and memes. After all, one does not simply edit the human germline. Now, of course, it's not all fun and games. The hard part comes in how to figure out where to cut the genome. It turns out that there's 18 billion combinations of genes, gRNAs, and off-target locations, which are important to understand in order to understand where to cut. Now, what Niccolo and his fellow researchers at Microsoft Research and the Broad Institute at MIT and Harvard are doing is they're approaching this as a machine learning problem, looking to predict the likelihood of gene edit success. And so basically, they got this data, they have a machine learning problem, they have the question, the metric they want to optimize, and then they spent almost six months full time looking at all of the different model families, tuning hyperparameters, slicing and dicing the data, trying to build the system that would predict this well and solve this problem. That's a lot of time and research spent. And so again, he's coming to that same data scientist dilemma. Developing ML and AI solutions involves spending a lot of time tuning, swapping components in and out, and figuring out what is the right way to approach the problem, that trial and error that I was mentioning. So somebody has got to figure this out, right? There's, there's really smart people in this community, really smart people out there. How do we solve this problem? It's not, we're not the first ones to run into it. Of course, there's things like grid search, random search, or even more advanced methods, such as Bayesian optimization. 
And you know what? These methods can work pretty well. For example, looking at tuning a deep neural network for something like image recognition, human-tuned DNNs compared to what you can do with these types of methods, you can do a lot better. And so there's some really good methods out there for doing this more efficiently. And of course, when, anytime you say it works, there's always a big asterisk. And that is the case is it works if you have just a few hyperparameters, you're willing to wait or spend a lot of money on compute power, and most of your parameters are continuous. Well, this is obviously not always the case in the real world. And in the case of the CRISPR ML problem, they had a lot of hyperparameters, not just a few. They needed to solve this quickly, and most of their parameters were not continuous. There's a lot of things that they wanted to look at that were discrete. And so they needed a completely different approach. And so what Niccolo did is he built a new approach on two key intuitions. The first intuition is we're going to sample instantiations of machine learning pipelines, which is going to make this space discrete. So in other words, we have all of those different pre-processing things we could do, things like PCA, removing outliers, normalizing the data. We have all these different model families we can do, things like linear regression, random forest, a deep neural network. And then we have all those different hyperparameters that we can go after. So we're going to make this space discrete. The second key intuition is we're not going to treat each problem as a complete, each data set as a completely new problem. We're going to actually reason across these different data sets. So those key, two key intuitions, again, which was looking at each data set not as a new problem and turning it into discrete search space. And what he's doing is, in this new approach is actually building a recommender system for machine learning pipelines. So you know, your normal recommender system, you'll have users and you'll have items. Rather than that, in this case, we actually have data sets that we're looking over and then machine learning pipelines. And then additionally, he's going to have a probabilistic framework for, to drive exploration and exploitation, basically how to search that space. And so the key breakthrough was to take uncertainty into account and incorporate a probabilistic model to determine which machine learning pipeline to try next. So here I'm showing how the meta-learning unfolds through animation. So the chart on the y-axis is the accuracy, and it, you're seeing that it's improving as pipelines are evaluated. And on the bottom, all these little dots are basically the different machine learning pipelines in a latent space. And then it's converging on things that have higher predicted performance, so the lighter color on the bottom left, as well as lower uncertainty, the darker color on the bottom right. And so basically what this means is the meta-learner is going to explore the most promising possibilities without having to do exhaustive search and converge on the best pipeline for a given data set much faster than brute force approaches. And so this worked really well for his problem. Using CRISPR-ML, researchers observed a 20% improvement in accuracy and a 50% savings in cost and time per gene. This was amazing progress in gene editing. Now, of course, Nicola is not the only one with the data scientist dilemma, as you guys all heard about my problems at the beginning of this talk. He thought he could help other people with this dilemma. And so we have this hackathon at Microsoft every year called One Week, where everybody comes together and does lots of different hackathons. And there was a ton of people that came and said, I have this data set, and I only have a few days. How do I get a pretty good model out of this that I can then go use? And so Niccolo and his friends in research built this simple system that would take an input data set and spit back out a Python object to all these people in the hackathon that they could then use to make predictions. And so this is when I heard about the system and was really amazed by its results. It, it can help you transform features, identify model, tune parameters. Of course, it's not magic. You still need to formulate the problem. You still need to understand what you're trying to optimize. You still need to understand how you're going to use the results. But it helps this entire inner loop of the data scientist dilemma. And so when I heard about this, started using the toolkit, I, me and lots of other people at the company started asking questions like, we have this toolkit that helps to spit out a Python object. It helps accelerate your development. We all have this tool that leverages and helps you with open source Python models called Azure Machine Learning. How can we actually bring these together to build a product that lets you use automated machine learning? And so when these questions started rising, yes, please, let's do this. And less than a year later, uh, this capability is now available within mach Azure Machine Learning as well as Power BI. Um, and these links that are at the bottom of the page, I've tweeted out earlier so that you can take advantage of those and read the papers and research behind it. 
So that, of course, now that it's available within a product, we have companies using it, such as BP, to accelerate their deliverables. There's things built in, such as model explainability, to actually help with some of the enterprise requirements. And automated machine learning is just one example of Microsoft turning research into product. There's been a lot of breakthroughs in areas such as vision, speech, and language that are now available through Azure Cognitive Services that, are, that you can take advantage of. Here are some example customers that are leveraging it. But more importantly, how do you, do you want to avoid the data scientist dilemma? Come visit us at the Microsoft booth or attend our session on automated machine learning tomorrow. Thank you all. <laughs>